Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here at the start of a video in which we're playing Unification Wars Beta as the Achaemenid Empire. Yes, under Emperor Archimus, but an age of strife. It is the 29th millennium. For nearly 40,000 years I have wandered the histories of man as a specter, watching, teaching, and learning. I have seen countless civilizations rise to glory and collapse ignominiously. I have played witness to the great events of our long tale and have been at the side of ancient figures who have fought in the great wars on terror and beyond into the stars. The, they were times of glory and legend. Those times are, though, lost to us now. Lost forever in the storm of rampage and chaos. It has been with the revolt of the men in I, and then came the agonizing birth of my kind. Psychers. Warp storms erupted across the galaxy, cutting off mankind's worlds from each other. The galaxy tore itself asunder in the torments of civil war, murder, and G-words, and treachery. And for 5,000 years, mankind has been divided, preyed upon by foul Zeno species, and the ravenous hunger of beings beyond our plane, and yet, as throughout all of its history, its cruelest predator has been itself. This is only the beginning, and... Difficulty second. Settings. Easy mode. Pure power fantasy. Normal as balanced as possible. May still be, still be easy. Hard as possibly challenge. Emperor mode. Ave Imperator. Well, let's go normal. I do always do literally all my campaigns on normal. Um, I should try hard style sometimes. But we have the National Spirits here. Aftermath of the Age of Strife. Pretty good. Labor Clan Unrest, which is not good. We have Jade Lord Unrest. Not good. We have Stubborn Governors. Really not good. Uh, a Stagna Host. Not very bueno. We have Immortal Unrest. And we have Hive Cities, which is okay. Not great. It's really not great, actually. So we're kind of looking not great, but ah, a one. An empire's origins. It is the 29th millennium, and over 4,000 years, the Achaemenid Empire stood dominant over the first creator of mankind 1,000 years ago. From the ancient waste of Persia, our forebearers emerged from persistent bickering and infighting and united as one great host. The first of our emperors, Zek Karnain rose above the other tribal lords to become the leader of our people. It was his actions that solidified Persian, or unity forever more, and codes of law he laid down continue to govern our empire to this day. He would die after taking a long and prosperous reign, having lived for over 200 years, but his legacy continued onwards into his son, Dul Karnan. Inheriting the empire as one of the youngest of the father's offspring, he bent many of his brothers to his will, and rose to the pinnacle of imperial dominance, even surpassing the ancient law of firstborn inheritance. With his rule solidified, he looked towards greater ambitions. He sought to carve out an empire the likes of which had not been seen for thousands of years, more than figuratively. He looked through the past of our land's history through countless foreign records, or forgotten records, and came across an ancient and unremembered empire, the first of its kind. Thus, he took up the name Achaemenid, Achaemenid and declared it would dominate the earth from Boeotia to end. He has seen the cruel state in which Terra had fallen into, and knew that if it was to see the light of civilization again, it would have to look into its past. Such hope there was then. History is tedious, leave me be. The First Immortals Dulcaren brought together the tribes and ordered their strongest men forward. This included most of his own brothers. They were warriors and blacksmiths, archers and haulers, riders and miners. They come from all walks of life, not just those of battle. Some had never wielded a weapon in their lives, much less killed a man. He ordered them all as a collective group, not separated by tribal identities, to go forth into the northern wastes to pillage, burn, and slaughter, and to bring back the heads of all the reaver lords that ruled up north. This was an outrage to the tribal leaders who saw this as a flagrant waste to their subjects, but Dula reminded them who their emperor was. His reputation was already that of such legend that the tribal leaders were easily cowed, with, thus with a little hesitation. These men marched northbound. Many weeks would pass, which then turned into months with no word back from the massive expedition. Dula's situation at home grew dire, with the tribal leaders expressing unrest for what they began to believe was a suicidal mission but one night. Reports had come in from Parthana. The expedition had returned. 500 men returned, 500 out of countless thousands of men and boys who had perished in the hellish waste of the Centresin uh, Waste. None of Dual Karan's brothers had survived. The survivors came back broken and bloody, wounded and forever scarred. Yet they lived while the others did not, and they learned a great deal in the trials of the North. And despite their losses, they were still quite victorious. A dozen tyrants' heads lay at the feet of Dual Karan that day. Dual looked at them and smiled, for he knew his gambit was successful. Thus, he proclaimed these 500 survivors his immortals, for they'd survive when no one else would have. What was he thinking? The Great Conquest. With the first 500 emerged the great hosts of the Immortals. Many had come across the tribes to pledge their service to this elite cadre of warriors, though few proved worthy to join the ranks. As years passed, the Immortals grew in numbers and strength, honing their skills in the Centrasin wastes. They became become the Terror of the North, an army of purging flame and devastation that drove terror into the hearts of the Reavers like a poison spear. But for Dul Karan, or Karnain, enough time had passed. The North was a scarred and depopulated desert, no longer a threat to Persia. Now the Immortals were ready, and an age of glory was soon at hand. Dul 
amass the immortal legions into onto the western mountain side, alongside countless auxiliary hosts, and from there they marched west. They swept into the plains of old Euphratia and seized the ancient city of Babylonia. There was little resistance from the locals, who were disorganized and disoriented from the sudden assault. The immortal hosts continued on for the west, crossing into the hills of Anatole and Cyprica, and crushing a tribal coalition led by the stubborn Hishmar Volglu. Uh, from Anatole, Dul turned southwards. <clears throat> The Immortals thus invaded the sands of Arabia, sweeping through the sedentary Arabian tribes and bending them to duel's will. This great campaign lasted for a little more than a year, and finally in the foothills of Yem, it had ended. Many uprisings occurred in the newly conquered territory, and thousands of pity, uh, many thousands of people were slaughtered. This new empire now stretches from the fringes of Anatole to the mountains of Saragets, or Saragtis, Sagartis. Yet it was easily won. There were few foes that posed a threat to the Immortals' conquest. Many of the mortal ranks clamored for a worthy foe to face off against. That one, if defeated, would solidify the mortal name forevermore. The lords of Uhuru Oma never saw it coming. And apologies for the long text. There's just a lot here. I want to make sure I get through everything here. The European War. The Empire of Europa had stood for over a thousand years in the ruins of the ancient, last ancient Terran civilization. Though it had become unstable and its control over its northern territories was waning, its military power was still yet unmatched by any in the West except perhaps for the Archimedes. Archimedes. Dul Karnyan saw in Europa a powerful foe, and one that would not yield easily. Their destruction would become legend in the annals of history, and would be the beginning of an age of Archimedes dominance over all of Eurasia. The War of Europa began with a certain strike into Boeotia, a client kingdom of Europa. Despite heavy resistance from the Boeotians, the Mor immortals broke through their defenses and swept across the land, operating eastern Europa up in for invasion, opening it up. Montana and Zerskia were quickly secured, and a pincer strike west into ancient Italia was also launched. The legend stole the three-month battle into Sicily, which, uh, in which a thousand immortals fought in an endless slug against ten million European surflings and thousands of techno knights wielding esoteric weapons of ages long lost. But this great battle and many others resulted in victory for the Archimedes, who made then a final push for the heart of Europa, Ruoma. Thousands of immortal warriors struck from the south, east, and north, and Dula Carnian, alongside two of his sons, fought personally in the Great Siege. Through fire and flame west and east clashed in the streets and suburbs of this eternal city. Slowly, the immortals pushed towards the citadel of Ruoma, the ancient city of Vatican. <laughs> Desperate in the rag defense, the noble houses of Europa unleashed their final weapon to hide their dreadnoughts. Their motives were taken aback by this adamantium Goliath, and Dula and his sons were pinned down in the Ruoman streets. And thus the battle had been suddenly frozen in place, for war had begun to spread throughout the Achaemenian lines. The emperor, along with his sons, had fallen. That darn brave fool, and the great shame. Shock surged through the hearts of the immortal ranks, and for the first time in many of their lives they felt an emotion that they could not describe true fear. The emperor and the leader were found or were now dead. Demoralized, fatigued, and without a proper leader, their immortals were pushed out of Ruoma. They could not rely on the leadership of the emperor's sons, for they had fallen with their father, and without a proper commander they could not hope to turn back the tide against the newly deployed dreadnought battalions. Surely, slowly, the immortals and their auxiliaries were driven out of the Italia still. Then Sicily, then back into Boeotia, having lost most of the gains in the campaign. In Boeotia, a great rebellion rose beneath the mortals' feet, and half of our ranks were penned between these rebels and the approaching European armies. It is said that five thousand immortals fought to keep their very last at, to the very last at the peak of Mount Olympian against a tide of European or European knights and dread knights. To this day, their names are revered amongst the great heroes of old Achaemenia. The surviving ranks of the mortals made it a stand on the border of Anatolia as an attempted incursion into those hills by the Europeans took place, but were driven back. No further attempts into Archimedes territory occurred. Thus the war was over, and Archimedes not only lost their emperor, his sons, and half their armies, but the dignity and pride they had built up over a century now had been shattered in just over a year. This was a great shame, and has never and has ever been a stain upon our church history, yet there is still hope for the future. The New Era <clears throat> As the immortals marched back to Babylonia in shame, war had reached a had already arrived of Darkulan's fall and his sons. A succession crisis seemingly loomed on the horizon, for there was now no direct heir to the empire. That was until the elevation of Sycan. Seemingly a born, boy born to the low nobility of the Jade Lords, he was brought forth by several prominent members of the imperial court, all good friends of Dul Karnyan. Sycan revealed that he was a son of Dul and the princess of Egyptus, the spaceborn. His existence was hidden away by his father as so as to protect him from his brothers, so Dul knew what they might have done. He had done those things himself, after all. And not a day had gone by that he did not regret it. Many were outraged at the very prospect of presenting a dude as a claimant to the Achaemenid throne, yet he was the last living blood of Dul Carnian, and few disputed this fact. Unlike his father and brothers, he was not a man of war. He was one of intellect and discourse, of reconstruction and rebirth. Though the empire was forged in war, it could not subsist on it. Thus, Sikion Carnian was proclaimed emperor of Achaemenia. Arch hmm. Achaemenia. I apologize for my mispronunciations. King of kings and lord of the new earth. 
He focused on the empire instead of distant conquests, a tradition that's carried on until this age. He built cities and infrastructure, improved cultural ties, established offices of administration and justice, and saw too that the empire would not be weak when passed on. It was not. When he died, be he left behind a stable and prosperous empire, one that would stand the test of time for many centuries to come. His son would continue this, that tradition, and his son, and all those that came afterwards all the way up until now. Until now. And also, I do I will read that post before we read that, so. From the past to the present. It is the 29th millennium, and the Achaemenid Empire still stands. 1,000 years of history have separated us from the days of Dul Karnian and Sikyan Karnian, and at that time little has changed but much has decayed. The first heirs of Sikyan established a bedrock for our empire, but since then many emperors have forgotten the ways of their forebears. They have insisted in t turn insular, preferring the high life of Babylonian court than the management of the nations. In the streets, the lesser nobility and common people squabble amongst each other. In old Pesha, the governor sees more power for themselves than the turbulent tribes of Arabia can clamor for independence. Yet most worrisome of all is the immortal legions. The immortals never forgave what they had been given a say in the right of Sikyon. And ever since then, they have remained begrudgingly loyal to the silence of Sikyon. But there has been an underlying sense of disloyalty, and some circles have even questioned the legitimacy of Sikyon's blood, and therefore the imperial house as a whole. But they saw more than a proper heir to the Dol throne of Dul. Their shame and frustration at the defeat of in Europa has never left them, not even centuries later, and in the peaceful, constructive ways of the emperors have never sat well with them. Unrest rises in the ranks, and a cry of wars begin to echo across the northern fringes of Persia. Whatever the future may bring, one thing is for certain, the long peace will soon be over, and the Ar Achaemenid Empire will forever be changed. Let it begin, and we already completed Shadows over the Empire. For over a thousand years, the Empire has stood defiant against all the threats of this world and has remained strong and stable for generations. Yet now, ancient scars are being, to, beginning to rupture. An empire is certain from not from without, but from within. Darkness in Arabia, immortal unrest. Just delay the immortal's rebellion. Because right now, we have a couple things here. We have high decisions, which is okay. Not great, but it's okay. We have resource prospecting. We have dealing with tribes. For many long centuries, the Arabian tribes have been a rebellious and nigh uncontrollable lot. Despite our rule, despising our rule and disrupting our authority at every turn, the most loyal among them demand greater autonomy at best, and the most defiant seek full independence at worst. If we retain our dominion over Arabia and not let it fall into a rebellion, we will have to be strategic in our choices to reorganize our control over it. So the only one that's loyal is actually the mood of Telmun Protectorate. Tribes that are not a dominion will become progressively more angry as time passes. So. We can unite the tribes eventually, but we gotta kill them off, at least in my opinion. And we also have immortal unrest. Blood is on the horizon. In the northern marches, the immortal hosts grumble under our rule, and their desire to return to the conquering age of Dual Kanyan grows ever greater with each passing day. If we do not take action soon, then the peace that our empire has maintained for so long will be ripped apart, not by outsider invaders, but from within. Not good, an ancient game. It was a quiet dusk in the imperial chambers of the citadel. Most of the court had retired to their rooms, and only a few servants passed through the halls and rooms, tending to their final duties before they too turned in for the night. But not for Alchemist, Emperor of Achaemenia. For the past several nights, he has come to his chambers later and later than usual, a peculiar thing for one such as he, in fact. He'd been playing a game with himself, a board game, to be precise. He discovered it while pursuing the high marks of or market of the Aramean district, posing as a petty jade lord. A place which saw various trinkets and baubles come in from all the corners of the empire and, of course, beyond. Ever since he had purchased this game, it perplexed him. It involved two players, but he played both sides. Each player had a set of pieces that had all their own rules of conduct. The greatest among these were the kings, and the one to win one must capture the opponent's king, or so that was what the merchant said every night. He had stayed away far beyond reasonable hours, musing over this ancient piece of entertainment. He had yet to play with it, with another. Oh, ret yet already he was infatuated with it. I wonder what it's called. Playing games up until it's like really early in the morning? What is that? That's like, that's like me in Civilization 6 or 5, even though I don't really know how to play 6 that well. Cool. Uh, because of the rebellion, I want to delay the rebellion if we can. Um, let's do immortal unrest. We get some political power. The immortals are the highest and mightiest warriors of the Achaemenid Empire, but uh, now they are one of the biggest threats. Centuries ago, they were driven out of Europa and Boeotia, and yet still the anger of the ancestors burns in them. We must deal with them before the problem gets out of hand. And we only have one general here, which sucks, but we know it is what it is. Hey, we have a lot of political power, though. Look at that. Um, cool. To play or not to play. It was past midnight, and Orc had yet to come to bed. With such much bitterness, Jinnus pulled us up from the warmth of the silken sheets and stepped onto the cold marble floor. Every night for the past several nights and weeks has just been this. He would stay up far longer than he should have been playing with that foolish little board game he snatched from the marketplace, and she knew by noon tomorrow he would still be asleep, like me. She remembered just several days ago, during a meeting of the council, he had been nodding off just as the council had been discussing the increasing unrest in Mecca Unran. Not only was it disrupting his own health, it was disrupting his very duties as emperor. Jeunus made his way through the halls, up the stairs, into the wide balcony, up into the air of Babylonia. There he sat at his table, moving one of his little pieces forward with that little sly grin. Orcus, or Archimus, Jeunus shouted. He jumped. Jeunus, shouldn't you be sleeping still? The look on her face was not kind. It's past midnight, you fool. You should be coming to this bed very, this very instant. <sighs> I know, I know, but I just... 
She slammed her hand on the, on the board. No, I'm not going to hear it, Orc. You've been up every night for the past week playing this little stupid board game, and I'm sick of it. Come to bed now. Sighing, he reluctantly nodded and rose from his chair. She was right. He shouldn't have let himself get so carried away. He had an empire to rule. I just want to relax, is all. By staying up way too late. Playing games. Is that relatable? That's totally relatable to me too much. Oh, God. Anyways, cool. Um, and so tribe lands. Issues in the hot land. I want to speak with Ardusian. Ardusian is the head of the snake that is the Immortals. He has been summoned before the Empire and has revealed us to a way, or revealed us a way to appease his legions to wage war. While we aren't content with this, it seems to be a necessary evil, and should we deny his requests, the consequences may be dire. A council meeting. Alchemist groggily attended a meeting of his inner council, mainly pertaining to the broad issues across the Heartland. Stuff like the Babylonian class infighting, administrative chaos in Anatole, and of course the Arabian tribes. Alchemist has exhausted through all of it and just. As the topic of the immortal unrest is about to be raised, Alchemist cuts the meeting short. A quick game should ease my mind. Okay, maybe he's addicted at this point. Oh, we have no- we can't even produce things. Holy crap. Wow, minus 73 some thousand. Holy smoky daddies. Dolph Brown, Baldur Hallna. Ruinous, ruinous Prophet. Oh, we are autocratic here. Oh, I like this one. This one seems pretty good. Apostle Lime. I like that one a lot. We'll probably go with that person. But then again, I do want to get some more Miller Doctrine, so we'll see. Ah, uh, Adusin. Adusin? Uh, we're not making things anyways. I do want to get some daily army XP though, so. Yay! And then, a voice in the council. The Immortal Empire. More than 74% for the Immortals. Becomes a ruling party. Or the Immortal Servants. Less than 1%. Oh, Jesus Christ. That is insane. What the heck? I don't know, man. Um. A voice in the council. Further talks with Ardusin led to us giving him a position in the council. This has calmed the Immortals somewhat. Oh god, which way do we want to go? So, Immortals are oligarchic. I kind of want to stay with this guy. I don't know much. I want him to be successful. We're autocratic already. I mean, autocratic and then, hmm. Actually, do we have any guys we can train here? Yeah, all these guys. Ah, they're trained. These guys are regulars. Okay. The Blazing Children are killing themselves. Always nice when children are killing themselves? Hmm. Anyways. But yeah, that'd be really, really cool. Oh, well, they've killed each other. Okay, cool. And, of course, we have the uh, North African Conclaves, Iberia. I wonder what that is. Europa, Boeotia. Oh, we're right next to them. That boy's in the council. All right, so what do we have here? Anything else? Okay, we prepare for war. Cool. We can actually prepare for war, which is actually really nice. Get some disparate industry. Follow it up with what? Um, I'm not really sure which one I want to do, so we'll do some other stuff first. How about a bronze host? We get political power, we get more attack, right? Our enemies will cower in fear when they see the sun shining off of our bronze host. And here we are, my friends. I've gone ahead and selected the button for prepare against, or prepare for war against the caucus. Wait, so hopefully we can do okay, but uh, the mortals will do okay. Maybe if they all die, then maybe they won't rise up. But hey, we're doing issues in the hot land. The heart of our empire is plagued by numerous troubles. Infections are allowed to fester over the centuries. In Persia, our rules weaken as local tribes expand their autonomy. And in the heart of the empire, Babylonia, old rivalries die, divide the city. And it's all tribe lands. Um, darkness in Arabia. Yeah, let's do that one. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Or Arabia. For centuries, this land has been a piece of unruly tribals and rebellious subjects with little for us to profit from. Yet, it is still our own territory, and too long has it languished in a near perpetual state of crisis. Something must be done before catastrophic strikes occur. Good, we got sharpening the blade more attack, too, so. We could promote a mortal council member. I don't know, and, or demote him, which would be fine with us. It's just. I guess we can demote him. We get more stability, though. I kind of like that, but that would really piss him off a little bit more. Um, where are they? They're literally at 10. Oh, we and they're, these guys are a puppet of the ethnarchy. So it is what it is. So you guys come over here, that'd be great. Cheshire? Come there. Um, I don't maybe mind doing that. 204 days. What times do we do that? Okay, well, the caucus waste are gone. That's nice. Um, there you go. Cool, so 200 some days. That's not great. Cut utilities for the underhive. Actually, how strong are these guys? Well, they have no one there. They have three divisions. We've got 23. And these guys are like mostly infantry and stuff, which is not great, but still. But still. Also, I've been waiting to promote this person, but we get like almost literally no command power. Almost literally. Oh, hello. Is someone down here? Hello. Oh, uh, we can't see them. Now we can see them. That's weird. Uh, deal with the tribes. Tell Muni Hegemony. Uh, oh, so they become our protectorate. When this focus is completed, you will automatically go to war with every Arabian tribe except the Telmunis. Telmuni Ara Arabia. 
Oh, we're situated in the north. Can I just kill them off? I just want to kill them off. Gain cores. Deal with the tribes. I'm going to deal with them. The tribes of Arabia are an unruly lot. At least three rebellions have occurred in this land since the beginning of our lordship. Though the tribes have rebelled long ago, they are now a little more than dust. Their successors have taken their place. If we were to find peace from the crisis in this land, we'll have to tread carefully. Probably. Their multi empire, less than 1% support for the immortals. Oh, it's not a civil war. I mean, I'll be honest here, man. We're trying to get less than 10%, so we'll see. The mortals are doing okay over here. It's not great, but they're doing... They're literally not obeying orders. Okay. Sure, why not? Guys. Yeah, these guys really are quite rebellious, I'll be honest. These guys are very rebellious. They refuse to do anything. Why do you rebel so hard? Just go, you uh, butt licker. I don't know. Do they like butts? I don't know. Let's not talk about that here. Um, anything else? Yes? Yes, please, yes. Alright, so now we can deal with the troubles in the immortal servants. We finally managed to subdue the mortals and turn them from a horde of unruly savages of the loyal servants they once were. Uh, if you wonder about this, please go right ahead, so. We can become a mortal empire, but not this time. Maybe, maybe next time. We'll see. Just go straight there, boys. Ah, yes, I love being very violent towards your enemies. Man, if you're not using violence towards your enemies, are you really gaming? Or are you just really enjoying life? You're not, you know. Sometimes you don't want to be violent towards your enemies, but sometimes you really, really want to be very violent. Alright, let's do that. So now we'll have the mortals taken care of for now. And also, this is a beta, beta you know, of the mod and stuff like that. But if, um, if you want to check out the mod for yourself, I will link it in the first link. It'll be the first link in the description below. Words are hard, as we all know. Um, rebellion will be done soon. People are angry. Don't really care, bro. Sorry. They're multiple servants. How long does that take? Oh, se Ooh, 70 days. That's cutting it kind of close. Um, Boetia. What is this one? Can we do this group? Yes. Oratu. 35 days. We add 70 more days, which is fine. It costs us 10% more stability, which is pretty kind of hefty fine for us. But you know what? We'll deal with it. You, me, we can, we can deal with it. Okay, we need do some more. We need 13 more. I want some coffee now. Atash Nurastani. Cool? Cool? The council has voted in favor of being gloriously handsome. But realistically. So after the immortal servants, we will go to where these guys are immortal legions. Oh, we created more divisions. I like that a lot. Situation in the south. Um, You know what? That'd be nice. That's not immediately necessary. I want to deal with the... the Arabia or Arabian Plains. So, the northern tribes of Arabia are some of the more civilized among their people, having been in close contact with the Achaemenid Empire proper for many centuries. However, they are still wayward with our rule as most of the other tribes. Oh, I love beating up enemies. Oh, oh thank you so very much. Now, technically, I've already played this mod once, and I played as the Imperium, which is incredibly fun. I loved it. I love... I can't wait to see what this mod has, especially for all these different nations here. I'm actually really, really enjoying this. So, if... If you haven't seen that one, that'll be the second link in the description below. Um, just to check it out if you haven't already. I would really highly recommend it, though. Uh, let's see. So what do we have here? Oh, civilian oversight. Uh, use cavalry divisions. We need less stuff for that there. And there you go. Just, you just need more guns. So we can only get 0.58. Not much. Let's see. And so the next one after this one is the Arab stuff. And mortal and rust will be good. Actually, before we go, uh, before the egg, it goes, where is it? Mortal. Okay, so we get 25% more stability. That's actually pretty darn nice. Situation in the north. All right. Ah, very good. And then followed up with the situation in the core lands. The core lands are, as the name suggests, the heart of Arabia. Or Arabia. And this heart is hot-blooded and rebellious. It, will, if, it was here that the largest rebellions of the Arabians had begun. And should we be careless in our actions here? These rebellions will, of course, <clears throat> give a new life to the more rebellions. When in doubt, they rebel, and when in doubt, and then they rebel, we go to the slaughter. But, oh wait. Oh! Okay, so maybe we should have done that one just yet immediately. Hmm. Maybe that's not good to do immediately, because we don't get as much stuff we can core, or d destroy. You know what? Maybe we'll go back and have a little game of us balancing us balancing things out. Oh, let's do So yeah, maybe we'll balance things out a little bit more. Alright, everyone. 
So, I know I'm not really playing this correctly. You know, we're going down the more, I guess, autocratic route. And with the Immortals, you're really supposed to go to war with more people. But I've done a few more focuses, such as the Anatole tribe lands. The lands of Anatole were one of the first territories conquered by emerging empire centuries ago, and since then has become a core part of our empire. But the administration of this land has been ineffective, to say the least. So many small tribal domains rule their own fiefdoms in service to Numba Babylonia. The Anatole tribe lands are therefore in dire need of administrative reform. Now, I could have gone with appoint governors, but that's so defensive focus. I don't want to be very defensive. I want to go in the offensive. If you start forming up what, defensive lines and defensive walls, isn't your civilization just going to collapse anyway? So, why don't we just keep attacking? <clears throat> Form the Anatole Conclave. Instead of forcing the Anatole tribes into serving an Achaemenid governor, we will give them a sense of their own representative governorship. The Anatole Conclave shall be established an internal division of our administration that will bind the tribes together under one banner so we get stability and a lot of political power so we can continue funneling our war machine to go to war with other people. Because if we're not being on the offensive, we're not having a good time, just being real with y'all. And then probably do the ancestral tribe lands. <clears throat> and we've gone to war with Tarika as well. Pesha is the homeland of the Achaemenid people and the soul of our empire. It was here that their forefathers emerged to carve out this nation and blood and toil. And they died, great. But for many centuries now, Persia has been dominated by tribal governors that only pay token service to the emperor. We must find a solution to this problem. As you can see, we have 101 days left. We still have that, so we can keep going to war, even though it doesn't really make sense why we should keep going to war. But hey, we can. Hopefully. Oh god, I hope so. I really hope so. So we'll see what happens. If not, then we have to end it, but whatever. So that's 100. These add 70 days, which basically is the same amount of time for this one that we did earlier. So I, I reloaded an autosave, so the Immortal Servant, so. It takes 70 days, so as long as we do have 70 days, 71 days, we'll be, should be okay. We'll see, obviously. But get more political power. Hello. Alright. Alright. So be it. So be it. I was not expecting that to be happening so soon, but alright then. Okay. Well, you get a promotion then. Ah, we can't do that now. Oh, god dang it. We're so close though. Oh, there we go. Yay! Uh, our guys are down there. Let's call all of our allies in. I didn't realize we had this many allies too, but hey, it is what it is. Oh, uh, is it because they're pissed off? Oh, they are revolting. Rubal? Ah, that's okay. Um, we should be able to get these guys done, right? It looks like we mostly can. Yeah. And then... This one over here. Cool. Increase autonomy. All existing Arabian tribes under Archimedes will be uh, annexed. The other tribes in the northern region will be act angered. The tribe will be calmed. Honestly? Can I just kill them? I just want to kill them off. Um, rebellion and Rubal. I, 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 um... I just want to kill a lot of these people off. That's all I want to do, man. I like the conquest. I really do. Do we have anything else here? Um, no. Can we not do it anymore? Oh, we should do this first, though. So. Thank you. Come again. Sure, guys. We'll take everything you got. Look at all stuff. And now, because of that, we get 1.07 every single day, which is really, really nice. So, hopefully we can do pretty darn well here. Ooh, that is not good. Add 70 more days. Remove 30 day mission focus. Uh, we'll see. I want to do another one though. I'll do at least one more. I want more conflict. Hopefully, we get it. Ancestral tribe lines are very nice. Let's not do a focus, so that's the way we can keep doing this stuff over here. And what is this? Vuglov? Yeah, this one. Nice. So, 115 days. That looks pretty good. Uh, up next, let's go ahead and do, let's see, research and imperial authority versus autonomous provinces. I don't like autonomous provinces. Develop the east, develop the south. Fortificate the south industries of Persius, Persis, Sagartus, revitalize lands. Um, remove stubborn governors, autonomous provinces. Wait, this one was what? Stubborn governors. Hmm. You get actually, huh? You do lose some stuff here too. I don't know. I don't want any debuff. So, research imperial authority. Imperial shall be absolute in every corner of the empire, and there will be no exceptions for our homeland. The governor shall once more be submit themselves to the emperor, and we will remind them of the lessons of the old Artaxerxes. Uh, Artaxerxes. We lose a political power and a lot of stability, but yeah, whatever. It is what it is. We got some planes here too. Very nice. Um, what else do we have? Anything here? Nope. That's going to be a little bit ahead of time. Uh, that's a little bit ahead of time. Don't really care. Let's do that. And I guess, yeah. Why not? Superior firepower. Lots and lots of bombs. 
The more bombs, the happier I am. And develop the south we could, but the city of Babylonia, shall we? Babylonia is an ancient and proud city. It was here long before man first dominated the stars, and it'll likely be here long after our flames died out. But if that is to come to pass, we must ensure it survives the present. Very cool. We've got a lot of stuff here, so it's actually really nice. Really nice. I think I'll mm, break this into two, maybe? Maybe? We'll see. We'll see what happens. Cool. How many more days for this? 11 days, 10 days. That's not bad. Because we'll be going to war very, very soon. Oh, I can't wait. Dweller conditions. That's not bad. We could use that problem. Honestly, honestly, get more stability. Actually, we might as well. But we have no political power, so we gotta wait. Good. Yay. They died. As they should. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, boy. Nice. Um, uh, the Gus? Yeah, the Gus. 73 days, 64 days. Wow, we actually have, like, no political power now. That's actually really bad. Hmm. Hmm. That's not good. Planes, though? Yes, now that's good. Gun cutters, huh? Well, probably get rid of that one, then. There you go. Get out of here. Brawlers are good. I think that's where it's at. Okay, so this is not looking very good for us, then. The Great Faction? Let's get some more PP. 42 days, 42 days, develop the east, west, all these different areas. Um, situation in the south. Well, hmm. Hmm. Not good. Maybe we should have just peace out immediately. But I guess the great faction. Our factions. The bulk of Babylonia is dominated by two major factions. The labor clans, a coalition of industrial workers, clans, unions, and gangs. And the jade lords, the lesser Babylonian nobility. There can be no compromise between these bitter rivals. We must pick one over the other. So be it. And just in case, let's get ready for whoever's going to rebel down here. Ah. I mean, if they really want to, they can try to rebel. It ain't going to end very well for them, though, so... Not sure what point they're trying to prove here, to be honest. Ooh, that's not good. That's actually really bad. You know, I can honestly see what happens if actually we have the rebellion. Because if it goes poorly, I'll just reload the save. Sorry, just... I kind of want to see what the rebellion's like. Since it's my first time trying this out, this faction, so... Come on, baby rebel. The great factions. Yeah, I do want to see what this is like. So just so we can see what what, uh, what they want, so. Hmm. Side with labor clans. Let's do Babylonian secrets, Imperial industry. Let's do Imperial industry. Though the labor clans may be the industrial powerhouse of Babylonia, the Imperial crown must secure its own privately owned industry so as not to be entirely reliant on the clans. Sounds good. So, if it, ooh, and there goes rebellion. Cool, that's fine. Stop training. Go in. Let's at least see what this is like. The immortal rebellion. Well, this is probably not going to go very well for us, since uh, okay, the immortal rebellion. The worst is coming to pass. We lost all communication with the northern Roman provinces, and reports are uh, coming in from the east of sudden fighting and attacks from the north. Uh, what was initially thought to be an attack from Urshat hordes was quickly cast aside when more reports arrived describing the attackers themselves. All throughout the rest of our empire, stark realization now dawns upon all of us. Their mortals have risen against us. Uh, they, okay, cool. Blood thus will be our undoing, and is it the immortal empires over here? Led by Ardusin. Okay, cool. He's a dictator. And he has exact same focus tree. Okay, he has exact same focus tree. That's interesting. Um, cool. Winds of change, more warfare. Okay. Bloodlust will be their undoing. I mean, we still gotta kill these guys off. Obviously, we don't have the mortals. How many divisions do they have? Uh, 3 to 11, that's not bad. But I just wanted to see what they were like, so let's go back and I will fix this up just a little bit for us. Alright, everyone. So, right now, I don't really feel like taking out the other empire. I don't really feel like it, to be honest. But, anyways, we're doing a situation in the south. Southern Arabia is the most distant of all of our territories and by far the most foreign. From the mystic scholar societies Katabania to the dark skinned saber warriors of the Sumhali, we must be especially careful in our dealings here, for though they may not have the rebellious spirit of the Makans, they still greatly value their own independence. Too bad we're going to get rid of all of them. Yes, once certain conditions are met, very nice. And we can do the Immortal Legions, might as well. Long ago, a long time ago, the world trembled beneath the thunderous steps of our Immortal Legions. It shall do once more again. And I'm just waiting for these guys to rebel, I'll be honest. I'm literally just waiting for them to rebel, so yeah. Oh, oh and there they go. Cool, I forgot. I should have done this earlier, but whatever. Um, that's fine. You guys should be able to win here, right? Cool, let them win here. They'll be fine. And uh, everyone else go in. Stop training, go in. 
Um, call in everybody too. Everyone's gonna get rid of us, which is fine with us. You know, things happen. Things happen. I guess coming in or not. No, you're already in the world. That's fine. Good, good, good. Breakthrough, breakthrough. Uh, we're attacking the capital, which is not going that well, actually. Then again, we're only using infantry here, which is probably not a great idea, but, you know, whatever it is, what it is, as we all know. Uh, don't let them attack us here. No, 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 no. Oh, they actually have armor. Look at that. No, they actually have armor. Support weapons would be very nice. Anything else? Oh, land auction's not coming along. Okay, then. We gotta do that one from earlier. Okay, so be it. So be it. Uh, could be going a lot better, actually. Could be going a lot better. How strong are these guys? They've lost quite a few guys. We've lost 10,000 already. Wow, that's quite a bit. We're not going to give up the, the attacks yet, though. Um, guys, can you hurry the heck up? Seriously, force the attack or die. Either one. Either one. Come on. I know they got power armor, basically, stuff like that, but still. Because I need these guys to hurry up, get through here so we can get down here. And I know these guys are moving through here, too, but whatever. Come on, kill them off. You guys go right here. There you go. Move out. Sure, 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 sure. Fine with me. Fine with me. Fine, we'll throw another army here. Led by someone else. And... Niniv Smith. Cool. Alright, Niniv. It's fine, it's fine. These guys cannot keep it up. There's no way these guys can keep it up. Techno Barbarians, there's no way. 12, 15 divisions are going to die, 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 die. Follow it up with what? Industry? Sure, why not? And they must have, yeah, they definitely have some armor, but we have some armor as well, which is actually very, very nice. Oh, horses, yes, there you go, boys. There you go, guys, go ahead and, oh, we got them, good. All right, come on over here, not too. We do need some more artillery and stuff like that. Let's get everyone on the line first, and we'll just smash the living crap out of them. Oh, oh, and I, I'm, at this point, I'm just manually justifying. We could have done that other stuff, but we're just going to manually justify. So, oh, the Magyar Empire, look at that. Buishias, Buishia, nice, go in, kill them all off. Let God sort them out. We lost quite a few guys, but I don't care. Ah, very good. Computer machine as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's do equipping the men. We must bring to bear our industrial might. Everything must be directed for the war effort. And every soldier will bear a weapon for the Empire. Sounds like a good idea. Technology is done. Good. Uh, grab some radar, because you can, because why not? Some multi legions. Very good, very good. I realize one of these guys has to die. I want you to personally see to it that they do die, though. And goodbye. You have died. You have perished. As you should. And we're only out. Actually, we got a lot of guns. We got 12,000. Look at that. Now we need some artillery, though. Nice. So, actually, you guys come up here. You guys will go there and have a good old time. Because why not? I could have put you under someone else. And you two do that. And even though we need to improve these divisions that we currently have, we need to go to our war by the 23rd of May, which is less than a month. But we're going to keep conquering because we can, because why not? You know, we love conquering here. And we're not conquering, we're not having a good old time. We're going to have command power, yes we do, big daddies. And Abdurrahman Faramand. Very cool, Mr. Dude. AF. You are Mr. AF. But after this one, we should go ahead and do reforming the Wehrmacht? No, the war machine. We cannot let any part of our military be left behind. We must reform every cog in a war machine. Sounds good to us. And let's go ahead and have a good old time, right? Ah, oh, yes, conflict. How's Imperium doing, actually? We should do relatively okay-ish, not great in some areas. I mean, they're infantry. They're not going to be super great, but whatever, you know. It is what it is. There, you want some of this? There, you can have some of this. Pretty much worthless land. Well, I mean, so like, you can probably go with crops here and whatnot, but like 0 out of 10? That's pretty god darn awful. And we're barely building stuff anyways. I mean, we're on like, what, partial mobilization? Something like that? It's really bad. Can't wait to core all this stuff, though. That'd be really good. Of course, we still have more uh, of our own uh, dominions that want to rebel against us soon, but still, whatever. And we have, I'm not worried about manpower. 14 million is... It's so good. It's just so tasty. So scrumptious. Ugh. Go, boys, go. G guys? Please? Alright. Uh, yeah. That's fine. Uh, come right here. Oh, can we not move that way? Why can we not move this way? Can you go over here? Okay, they, they can. Oh, well, they're gone anyways. But that's very odd. Okay, sure, why not? Followed up with what? Uh, a professional standard. Our soldiers must not only be strong, but disciplined as well. When they see our armies, they shall behold a uniform sea of death. Great. More already. 
We have some more support equipment and a lot more planes and resources we really do need. Um, up next, oh, Rebellion in Masha. Masha. Masha, baby. Masha, why do you do this to us? Ah, baby, come back. You can blame it all on the other guys. Alright, well, it is what it is. Whatever, I'm not even going to pay attention really to, to it too much. Um, and then arena training. Our soldiers will train in arenas of blood and sweat. Two will enter, one will leave. We have no place for the weak. Because why not? Why would we? Alright, you can go to the bottom. Keep making our civvies, that's fine for now. What are we on? We are on We are on partial mobilization. Oh, prepare for this great struggle. Always love it. Love, 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 love the great struggle. We could really use more arty, though. Other than that, we're looking really good on most stuff. Um, we have one. No, it's not worth it. Better radar is very good as well. Let's grab some of that. No, let's get some better infantry plasma guns. It's a little bit ahead of time, but I don't really care. And we got to kill off Europa by the end of this too, right? Let's see. Oh, these guys all just want to rebel. Like, bros, we've been we've been pretty nice to you guys. We've been pretty good to you guys. And you just want to? That's how you want to treat us? I don't think so, man. I don't think so. But what is up next? Air theorist. Oh, what do you have here? Oh, do we get someone else here? Autocratic stuff. Um, can we get more tech or industry? How about industry? Industrial. Let's do industrial concerns because we can. But it's a grand host, and they shall know true fear. Oh, we remove a stagnant host. And they shall know true fear. Okay, so we get more tech and defense. Great, 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 great. So they have 110 days left, but we have how many days left for these guys? 60 days. Hmm, that's not great. But it shouldn't take that long to kill these guys off. Actually, yeah, you guys do this. Come up here. It's fine. I don't care. More conquering. More less talking. More conquering. Good. Do you have any planes? We don't have a lot of air bases though. Oh yeah, this stuff of aircraft we get from our other people. Good. But a ground host, and I do want to do tradition, maybe. Return to monk, maybe return to tradition. I think that stuff is all good. 12, 14, that's fine, whatever. Um, 76 days. Oh, look at this. Iron Justicarium. That's pretty cool. Tengesh the Black. Oh, yes, very cool. Give him more. Okay, we got a lot of soldiers. Oh, because it takes almost no time to train these guys, which is really nice, but still. Um, up next, let's go do some develop the East, why not? The Eastern Persia is hardy and rugged land, and it is here that many immortals make their home, yet it is also isolated and backwards. We must develop these lands and bring the shield of Persia back up to speed, my friends. Not bad. 13 days left is not bad. Uh, can we get actually anybody here? I don't think we can help lower just five world goals times. I kind of doubt it, but whatever. That's alright. It's fine. And there we go. Because we have rebellions in the south to deal with. Yeah, I don't know. I would say that the rebellions in the south makes sense but because they're so divided. They don't really have any negative consequences for us yet. I'd say, like if, even if they rebel. So I don't know. It is what it is. It's not bad. It's just there's there's no real reason why you just can't lose it and do stuff later. Maybe with it. Maybe I could be wrong about that, but I don't know. We'll see. That's this group that wants to kill us off, right? And Kofir. Ah, right here too. If that's the case, let's do it like this. Hmm, actually, you guys do it like this here first. Whee! There you go. You'll be fine. And I'm going to sacrifice you guys to go right here. There you go. Right there. Nice. Nice. Awesome. And I did get some coffee off screen as well to keep us nice and warm. They all wanted to rebel, but... Don't think it really worked out that well for them. I'll be honest. Don't think it really worked out that well for them. Do we have any other upgrades yet? No... No, that's big sadness hours, you know, big, big, big sadness hours. But let's get some more stability, too. I would like some more stability. War sports, nice, but stability would be even better. After them, I guess we'll keep moving up. Why not? Terawak Clan? It's kind of a while, but that's all right. I know I did say I just want to get more stability, but that's okay with me, because we're looking pretty good. Why is Imperium so... What are they doing? What is AI Imperium doing? Advanced autonomy, because I've played as them. Okay, well, it's up to them, I guess. But, you know, whatever. Develop the East. The Beast of the East. Develop the South. Like those that came before us, our empire merged from the old land of Perseus, Ojiva, uh, Gedros, and Karamania. It is the ancestral home of the Karnian tribe, and by extension, the Imperial family. These days, it has fallen into poverty and mismanagement, but we shall breathe life into it once more. Great. And they've gone to war with us, and we're just going to kill them all off. As God said we should. 
Go boys, girls, and the Tillman Protector is doing okay. And then we'll do some industries of Sagartis. The East is not the industrial heart of oh there they go of uh, Persia, but like the rest of our empire, it must be under, it must understand the ways of modernity. The Eastern tribes will learn how to toil in the factories, or they will decay into irrelevancy. Absolutely. You guys are actually probably just going to win here anyways, right? Yeah, there you go. Nice. Does anyone else want to rebel? I will kill every last one of you pieces of garbage off. Grant them sharing. Loosen the grasp. Well, I don't know. Aftermath and a grip, so. Um, we might just want to actually annex them, maybe? Maybe eventually? I don't know. Delay reduction is nice at this point. Mobile defense. I'm not even going to stop the speed at this point because I don't think really that many things can stop us except for ourselves. So, yeah. And at this point, cut these guys out which we're making. Terror what ideal. That's cool. Nice. Oh, and we have nothing here too. Uh, yes. Terror what industry. Let's go and do. Um, Babylonian secrets now, let's wait, let's do infrastructure in the north. Most of the northern Anatolia lies in the dried husks of an ancient sea, now a dusty nomadic wasteland. The tribes here live in small encampments and hovels with little in the way of proper transport or infrastructure. The conclave will see to it that this region is, or will be, developed. It's a little bit ahead of time, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to me. Thank you, come again. Uh, I don't really care about uh, transport planes too much here. Looking not too bad, not too bad. We're coming along very nicely, very, very nicely. Uh, I did say I want more stability, but... Ooh, military expedition. Oh, we get more weak... Oh! That's a lot more weekly stability. I like that one. That's a lot. That's actually really good. Sure, why not? And we'll grab them tech sharing, maybe? Unite the tribes. I think we'll do this one next. God dang. That's so fast that we make all this stuff. Infrastructure in the north. Followed up with... Northern industry. To some, the industry of northern Anatole might sound like an oxymoron, but if the Empire has ever reached a second pinnacle of prosperity ever again... Every corner of the empire must put in the effort required to see it through, even the barren and insignificant corners. How big are the armies of Europa? Led by techno barbarians, of course. We have no idea. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Go ahead when you can. And about less than forty days. That's very nice. And eleven, thirteen cities working. Very good. And we'll do this one next. Oh, we can do revitalized lands. I do want to do that one. So. Industry of Persia. Um, two days left. It's fine. Cool. Whatever. Sure, why not? Alright, and then we'll do industries of this one. Cool. Uh, Southern Persia has never been an industrial land that people that are traditionalistic prefer a meticulous craftsmanship over mass-produced weaponry. But in dire times are at hand, and our empire must adapt if it is to survive. We can do traditions... And chariot lands, we get a lot more cavalry attack and defense, and even more attack and defense for cavalry. Wow, and infantry as well, that's really good. Versus winds of change. Now, we want mobile warfare, so... Oh, we didn't go mobile warfare, we went superior firepower, because I love superior firepower. I think I'll just go with traditions of the Empire. And we do have winged sphinxes as well. Hey, we got it done, nice, good job, guys. Since we're here, let's go and do this one. Do the loosen grip. So then maybe we can do this one eventually? Maybe not. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Um, this one, yes, please. And then this group next, because we can. Nice. Does that mean we just gotta build in your lands then, maybe? Oh, crap, we probably just have to give them stuff then. At this point, do we need to even make any more armies? Because I wanna make these guys bigger, not bigger and better, so. After this one, though, a revitalized land, after many years of reform and labor, Pesha can be once more proudly be called the true sons of the Achaemenid Empire. Cool. Keep going, guys. You're doing great. Ursh. 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 Hive City. The City Nobles. The Roma. Oh, they do kind of have a unique focus for you. Uh, Seed of Doubt. The Franc Discussion. Alright, cool. And the Terrible Clan is gone. Our Empire's looking pretty good, I'd say. Pretty darn good. Oh, it's the other one we want to do. There you go. Maybe get some logistic companies too, perhaps, as well. Alright, not bad. And a revitalized land, followed up with what? Ooh. The Heartland Stabilized, I'd love to do, but... Labor Clans, Grand Charters, Districts, Labor Clan Unrest. Say, with these guys, 
Grand Imperial Estates, and Authority of Clans. I think I want to do this. Maybe we start with the Labor Clans this time. The Labor Clans are the heart and soul of Babylonia. Without them, our industry would be absolutely crippled. We must support them in the Great Babylonian Game, as well as grant district charters. If the Labor Clans are to further, further the growth of Babylonian industry, they'll need more room to expand. We'll charter them to the districts in the city that they manage or they may expand their industries into. The culmination of a legacy. He was the heir of a legacy older than the Empire, his ancestors having risen from the city's rabble some 1,200 years ago. History flowed through his blood, for he was a true nobility, able to trace his line back further than the Empire he served. Yet, yeah. here he was, drunk in his room alone, but for a servant who was dutifully refilling his drink when he got low. He let out a deep sigh. It's all over now, isn't it? His servant watched him carefully, deeming it safe to respond. What's over, my lord? He emptied his glass yet again, speaking while she refilled it. Everything. Now that the commoners are in charge, I won't be able to restore my family's name. I'm a disgrace. No wife, no heir. Now no business to rule over. His glass emptied and filled itself twice once more. Over a thousand years of nobility, and how does it end? With my darn fool of a father and his darn fool of a son drinking himself into a stupor. Only one servant to his name, yet again the glass went empty. What shall we do now, my lord? The glass filled itself to a half. He lifted the glass up to eye level, gazing at its contents. Is there any more? With a clunk. She sat the bottle down on the table. No, my lord, that was the last. He gazed into the liquid as if it would co contain the answer to all his problems. Then, for the first time, he looked her directly in the eyes. A resolute look of sadness was all that he could gl be that he gleaned from them. Leave me, he said with a nod. I must prepare. She did not react, mechanically uh, turning the, her body away and walking out of the room, silently closing the door behind her. It was silent, then a shot rang out, then it was silent again, but with a whimper. Supporting the labor clans, daily... Holy crap! We lose so much political power. That's not worth it. Ah, we, I made a mistake. That is not worth it. I should not have done that. No one. I should not have done that. Labor clan unrest. Ah, uh, that's a that is not worth doing. That is a hundred percent, twelve percent not worth doing. Yeah, losing that much PP, not good. But right now we can unite, unite the clans for some reason. So I'm not sure why, but okay. Yeah, we should just go with the Jade Lords. That's a better way to go. This is a much better way to go than with the stupid labor clans. Who cares about the labor clans? Give us our conflicts. But empower the labor chiefs. The labor clans are a repressed class in the echelons of the Babylonian and Archimedean society. Yet they are the foundation of our empire is built upon. We will empower their leaders and grant them authority independent of the Jade Lords. Which is probably a gigantic mistake. But oh well. T time to and have some more conflict. Yay, conflict. Oh, you guys going in. Going, 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 going. Just kill them off, please. Just, just thrash them. Thrash them harder, baby. And we're trying to get some logistic companies to do so. And there they go. Goodbye, Alphas. Very nice. Ah, district charters, there you go. Empower the labor chiefs, because you can. And all we've left is this guy down here. So I think I might want to take out these guys. Maybe Egyptus. Probably more like Egyptus. But hey, you never know. Cool. Head on down south, guys. And let's go ahead and unite the clans whenever we can. Or the tribe, they're not clans. Clash of clans. Hey. Nice. Oh, Archimed... Archimed Arabia. What was that one? Oh, it was right here. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Better already, because we can. Why not? Because we deserve it. Oh, look at that. Techno Barbarians. Wait. Oh, we annex these guys. Eh, I don't really want them. Eh. Goodbye. And you guys are 20 combat width. Eh, not worth it. Sorry. Yeah, I don't... Uh, I don't know. These guys are okay. Techno Barbarians are nice, but they do cost, I think, um, Special Forces. Yeah, they do. They are considered special forces, so. If we're going to use special forces, they're all, they're all just going to be like the single template, so. I don't feel like using them. I think what we got is good already, so. But, the tribe lands are new. Though our through our diligent efforts, the Anatole tribe lands are, for the first time in our history, a productive and essential part of our empire. Sounds pretty good. Well, I'll get two political power, too, which is pretty nice. I um, mean, Arab Ya stabilized. Very cool. Actually, what do we have? Looking north, looking east. Um, yeah. Stabilized. We have done what generations tried before us. Tried. We have brought peace, freedom, justice, and security to the lands of Arabia. Cool. And Babylonia United as well. Because I do want to get through these stuff as well down here. Peace in the north. Ursh. There can only be one. Imperium. Egyptus. Oh, we go to war with Egyptus anyways. Europa and Boeotia, huh? Well, if we go to war with them anyways, then... Huh. Logistics 1. Let's go to Logistics 2. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't care. I don't care. I'm sorry. I just don't care about these guys. Yeah, what is Imperium doing? Um, I guess we can go to one of these guys next, perhaps. Maybe? Yes? No? Maybe so? Yes? Yes, yes? It's gonna be a while before we can get to the, the further other direction. West, of course. 
The Imperium seems very... not doing much. But we're looking pretty good. We're looking very sprawling, I would say. Very sprawling. Tribal is renewed, and then uh, the Arabia stabilized, so... Follow it up with what? Because we, we don't need everything here. I didn't realize we didn't need everything, so... We got this one done. So all we need left, really, is this one. Babylonia United. Um, actually, are we just fine, though? We can do that one in just a little bit. Yes, we're going ahead and doing that, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Grab someone else here. Here about guns, small arms? Sure, why not? For now. The secret conflict waged under the smog of Babylonia has ended, and once again our city is at peace. Though societal divisions may continue to persist as they always have, for now the city of a million years is unified. Well, at least for now, of course. We're still building up some more roads, which is fine, but let's build some more cities too. 40%, 100%, 70% is not bad. Anything above 70%, 80%, oh, oh, other than 100% too, oh yes. So keep working on all that stuff, that's fine. Not too bad, pretty good, pretty darn good. So we're going to go here, to here, to here, to here, to here if we can. We'll go one, two, three, and then go, eh, that might be better actually. But then again, that's a really massive army up there, a nation, and I don't really want to mess with them too much. We do have plenty of artillery, so let's increase this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Babylonia United. Bronze hosts. Lots of arty boys. Motives of Kahamana. Very nice. Alright, so after that one, then we'll do the hot lands stabilize. Reform after reform, order after order, we'll accomplish what Nufu emperors have accomplished in our history. The heartlands are finally a stable and productive land, from Anatole to Sagartis. The emperor's rules once again, uh, once again, dominant, and more important still, respected. We get 10% more political power, more stability, more division, defense, uh, the air gets focused on defense, and better economy stuff, or po po political stuff, sounds good to us. Of course, we do need to be looking outwards as well. A 70 day focus, man. Kind of sucks. 70 days are so long. So long. I've been, we've been spoiled by such short focuses. More stability. Um, I'd rather get that and... I mean, that's, a, that's a lot, though. That's a lot. For basically double this. Double the time. So you only get everything there. You do get some good army XP. And this is 200 political power, though. I'd rather do this one. There you go. Cool. How are... Suppli our supplies looking great, actually. Really nice. Great. Babylonia reunited, or united. There you go. And after that, 70-day focus. Oh, good God. Uh, looking outwards. Now that the issues in the empire are resolved, we need to deal with our neighbors to ensure that our empire will endure the test of time. So I... Mm, Europa, I do want to kill them off. Looking south, this shouldn't be too bad, right? Egyptus, we'd like to do as well. It shouldn't be too bad. We'll probably go boom to boom. Why are they 70-day focuses, man? That's so long. And looking east is okay. Imperium, I want to kill off. And Ursh would not be bad, but eh, we'll see. We shall definitely see. There you go. Nice. Oh, we need way more already now. Wow, baby boy. We actually need way more resources. Holy crap. Where are we on? Oh, we're in close. We're already on closed economy. That's really bad. Wow. Okay, we got to use some tech here to improve ourselves, too. That's really extremely bad. We can't even make any more stuff. Artillery is not, coming, is not doing too badly, but still. Jesus. Uh, air warfare? I guess we could do that, because why not? Mm, civilian infrastructure is pretty good as well, I would say. Yeah, that's not worth it. The labor clans are... They cost too much for me to want them. I mean, don't get me wrong. 45% factory output and construction speed is extremely strong. And for 0.5... I mean, maybe I should have taken this early. But then again, we can't do the other stuff without doing it as well. So, who can we go to war with? Ah, these guys are good. And they'll go to war with Children of Khan. Kant. Can't. Kant. Go in, boys. Uh, yeah, this group has a lot of divisions, don't they? Yeah, they do. They have quite a few, actually. Unfortunate. Doing a little bit of damage. Not a lot, but some damage, which is nice. Hotlands are stabilized. Good, good, good. Looking outwards is good. Okay, we still get one every day. That's not bad, right? One a day. Nice. And then, let's go do looking west. No, let's do looking south. Many generations ago, Emperor Sikin Kanarn led our glorious nation. He was the son of Emperor Dulukarnan and uh, a princess of Egyptus. The time has come to unify our nations. I don't like that we can't core things, which makes us why we can't, but still. I would love to core things. We lost a lot of guys, but it doesn't really matter, honestly. It really doesn't matter. 360 is quite a bit, but whatever. Don't really care. Ah, uh, we gotta do some of my stuff too, but oh, whatever. Oh, we overran a couple of divisions, which is very, very nice. Not bad, not bad. They have a lot of divisions still. Stockpile, not entirely sure of, but that's okay. We still got some time here. 
high. We've lost 45,000 versus 107,000. That's not bad. These guys are fighting to the tooth and nail for against these guys. But it's giving our guys a lot of good experience, too, so. And Desert Expert, nice. Infantry Expert, nice. Ooh, yeah. Not looking great right now, so go and stop the attacks. Just hold. Hold the line. Actually, can we throw this stuff on there? Uh, probably can't. Uh, can we? Darn it, that sucks. Integrated support's nice. Come get this one too. We just had you guys focus down here. Supplies are pretty bad down here, but still not as bad as it could be. Ardusin? Yes. I want you guys to keep attacking though. Like realistically, let these guys attack. Let these guys defend for now. All right, 67,000 versus a uh, quarter million. Not bad, not bad. You guys still going in. Still doing a good job. Still doing a good, right job. After looking outwards, yeah, looking south. Looking outwards. Now the time the Empire is safe from threats from within. We must ensure that it is safe from the threats without. There are enemies in every direction. Which one should we do it first? Oh, we can do this first. Let's go, let's go west. Just because we can get that one done immediately. Over a million years, millennia ago, or one millennia ago, we waged war with a nation in the West, the remnants of the Great Foundation, Europa. We lost that war, and with it, we lost our ancestor, Abdul Karnian. Over 1,000 years ago, we got humiliated. The time to deal with Europa again has finally come. But we could do the tribes. Vassalization? We don't believe in that. Claim Gyptus. Gyptus is ours. We will take it by force if necessary. Yeah, you guys are doing well. Just let, just defend for now, like for the most part. Just mostly defend. Uh, who do we have here? Defense? Oh, more attack. Straight up, just get more attack. We're gonna be losing a lot of stuff here, and actually, we have we have more than enough to repair here, so not too worried about it. Um, what is the biggest issue here? Just weight, supply, previous infrastructure. Yeah, that's not good. Build more of that stuff. There you go. Build more of that good stuff, man. They are running out of equipment. Probably not. Probably not manpower, but you never know. You cut them off here. You kill them off here, then. There you go. These guys will die, which is very nice. Anything else? Infantry experts, good. They're looking really bad. We can probably just go in now. There you go. Nice. Uh, I do want to take these guys out too, but that's pretty difficult. I think we'll just go down here and make it a little bigger. 220 days is a long time. Wow. Of course, then again, we're going to go war with those guys too, which is fine. But whatever. We got time, so... These guys are taking a while to kill off, though. That's so unfortunate. Whoa! The Confederacy is doing quite well down there. I was just asking them, huh? Oh, is Imperium finally doing something? Oh, they're finally doing something! That took so long for them to do! Holy crap! Holy crap, that took so long! Wowzers and bowsers. And if you're still watching, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it, guys. I really do. There we go. Just in case we need to do that. These guys are literally doing like force defense or something. There we go. They've only lost 1.0 some million. Jesus Christ, that took so long. And I'm sure supplies are going to be really bad through here too, but whatever. Nice. Ooh, that's gonna take so long to do. Kutani is one. Egyptus would be nice. The War of Vengeance. The time to march against Europa has finally come again. It t this is the Hour of Vengeance. Oh wow, we're doing quite well. We've already taken out like half the kingdom. They have 13 divisions, not bad. Anyone else have upgrades? Hopefully you become a logistics wizard or organizer. He's, he's getting there. It's taking a while though. He's getting there though. It's good. Logistics or oh, artillery, yes. That's our infantry hit even harder. The Russian pact has been hit. So we take out these guys, and maybe we can just like have a defensive line right there, something like that, maybe. Good. Now let's go back this way and take these guys out. This way we can build up the infrastructure on that side too, so. Head on over, boys. We keep making some civvies at the same time. We need some civvies, right? We really do need some civvies. 
Aegyptus, and War of Vengeance, of course. And, boom! Ooh. Well, everyone, we are about to go to war with Aegyptus, and supplies are actually looking pretty darn good. We should probably do okay against Matoi Bahur, but we're still doing the War of Vengeance, which should go okay, but you never know. Followed up with Looking East. A new power emerges in the East. Its leader is known as Emperor of Man, implying he's a master of our whole species. Quite preposterous. Oh, now here comes the attrition. Holy crap. And we're still trying to build ourselves up anyway, so... It's all good. All good. We still get one every day, which is awesome. Awesome. Emerald, was that? Fringes of Sahelia. Alright, well, Egypt has died. Very nice. Uh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Cool, so you guys... Come over here. I want you guys to be able to strike fast and deep into them. As best you possibly can. You guys come over here, too. Hopefully this doesn't last too long of a war, but you never know. Maybe we want to create an intelligence agency just so we can figure out what they have around here. I do want to make sure we do quite well, but you never know, of course. One, two, three, some? Not bad, not bad. We do have 20 air XP as well. Uh, within 20 days we will be going to war. Oh, they do have some divisions on the line already, which is not super bueno, but hey, we're looking pretty good. Like, equipment-wise, we're doing great. Great, 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 great. Even fighters are looking good, too. Um, guess you get three. Why not? Adamantium mines. Let's get some steel mines as well. Because, my goodness. Oh, actually, we're doing well on Archaeotech, so. But steel. A plaza steel. Adamantium is really bad. War of Vengeance is nice. I get some more PP looking east. Nice. Hey, there you go. Nice. Um, it's only one spy, but. Well, in 20, a few days, so. Let's go to warp. Let's do it. Set the record straight. Kill every last one of them off. Uh, we can't even see how many divisions they have? Okay, no, we can't. Okay, they have way less than us. They have way less. Did they just... No. Yeah, that's good. They have lost 33,000 in the first op opening, like, week. Nice. 20 combo with infantry is super nice. I love it. I hope you love it as well. Propaganda cut... Oh, uh, utilities. It's not bad. We can use more war support, more stability, of course, as well, but whatever. Not bad, not bad. You guys are struggling a little bit more than I would have liked, but that doesn't mean anything since we just kill these guys off. We have a more stronger front line now. Roma will be ours. Hey, look, I can see the mountain range here. And the kind of the boot. Ah, oh, what happened? Was this like the Atlantropa Dam or something? Look at all that. It's all, it's all, there's no water left. That's really sad, actually. It's really, really sad. Um, plane-wise? Aircraft? Sure, we have aircraft. We can do that one, why not? Ah, uh, Sturlager Hogenmiller is a kisser, so we like those lips. Probably kind of nasty lips, but hey, they're lips regardless. And when you got lips, we say hello. But there can only be one. The Imperium claims it's more important than us. It's time to teach them a lesson. Use dirty sons of guns. Yeah, we're doing really, really well. They lost centuries ago? Ah, oh, just give it time and they only have 12 divisions max. Ruoma. Oh, God. Yeah, thank you. A Vatican, huh? Oh, the poor Vatican. I wonder if it still has a ruler there. Eh, maybe. Look at all those little buildings they have. Not too many roads, but a lot of buildings. Okay, they died. We're really making this empire kind of thick. And you know what we like? We like them thick. Cool. Alright, looking east. Ah, good. Just in time. Just in time. Even though the supplies are probably not going to be great here, but fine, whatever. Bing bong. Give me those bing bong and you'll be doing good. So that's this group, right? And then maybe we'll go to war. These guys just stretch out this line just a little bit more. Because on defense, like these guys are not going to be easy to beat. But we'll see what happens. There can only be one. And then looking north. A terrifying threat lurks in the north. The mighty empire. Ursh. We need to deal with them before they decide to come for us. Peace by force. How is strong is Ursh? These guys are probably not super strong. Not like the other guys, of course, but still. Now that everyone else help out. We have so much manpower, it's ridiculous. Um, oosh. Yeah, we have a massive border with them, so. Oh, they died so fast. Holy crud. Let time go on. Now, Enclave, of course. I have no idea. It's a little bit of time, but uh, whatever. Mm, whatever. Nice. Good job, guys. Good. I don't care about technology anymore, so we'll see. Get some planes too, that'd be nice. And get some radar. That could actually be kind of beneficial for us. 
Uh, research speed? Sure, why not? Research things just slightly faster. One, two, three, four. Keep going with this stuff, too, though. We definitely want some more of that. That'd be good. That can only be one, though. How many divisions do they have? Oh, they have a lot of attrition there, or a lot of resistance, I should say. We like that, so we'll learn more about these guys very, very soon. Though there only can be one in looking north, of course, my friends. Can you guys actually win here? Hmm? They are barbarians. Overall, yes. And how many more days? We got about two months left, huh? Well, overall, not too bad so far. Really not too bad. Can we throw any more casts on them? Got a lot of gun cutters. That's pretty nice. There you go. Nice. Alright, overall, we're doing a lot better than, th than I thought we would. We're doing a lot better, because these guys are not super easy to beat. Usually. I know supplies are really bad here. Ooh, maybe we should stop attacking then. Just hold for now, because they're going to start attacking like crazy. Hopefully. Especially right here, with their special, special units, probably. Yes, the Command Squad Valor. That's going to be not easy to beat. But I think, of course, and again, they might run out of equipment before they actually kill us off, but we'll see what happens. Just hold, don't worry about it. Just hold. Hang out. Have a good time. I'll be in declare war on that group. That's fine, fine, fine. Do they really stop attacking, guys? Guys. Guys. Nice. Good. Crush them. Should we get some more stability? Why not? We can do it this time. We'll go to war these guys next. And after looking north... We'll do. We need to stop Kalagan's ambition of conquest before he turns his greedy head towards us. Our parental strike against the Empire of Ursh is necessary for our survival. Oh, we're good war too. Great. Oh, they're attacking us. Look at that. Nice. Alright, boys and girls. Let's go on in. Beautiful. Oh, go on in, guys. Um, uh, Casualties, 3,000. Oh, that's a lot of losses. That's a lot of good losses. Now, once these guys die, we're going to start attacking them once again. There we go. Nice. Fighting in monsters is going to be so bad, though. We could just let them come into us, but, yeah. Soxia? Ooh, they are getting some pretty bad attrition there, too. That's kind of nice, actually. So, after this one, Peace by Force... Um, we're actually pretty much done here, but we'll do Traditions of the Empire. Traditions have kept us alive this far, and we'll keep the Empire alive a lot longer after we've taken all... After they've died. We must see the lessons of our soldiers. Yes, because we can't, why not? And because of that, let's help uproot their entrenchment as well. Good, because most of the divisions are not very good. They obviously have some extremely good power armor, but most of the divisions are not that, so... One more Warsport, too. Where's the Warsport one? Yes, more support. Anti-tank is fine. Good, 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 good. Some of that too. Great, 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 great. Keep going in, boys. You're doing great. We've lost 36,000 versus 157... 60,000? Great. Oh, and since we're here... There's so much manpower. I love it. Actually, this guy's looking not too bad. There, do some of that too. We're definitely going to need that. Centralized fire control. Let's grab some forward observers. Good, good, good. Oh boy, that is not ideal. I'll just go here and take their places. They're running out of guys and equipment, so... Oh, they actually guys here. Look at that. Go figure. Force the attack. Power armor v. Power armor. Kill them all off. They're looking extremely bad. We're still winning. Nice. I was really worried about this group. But we seem to be doing okay. Is that going to capitulate them, maybe? Maybe not? Ooh, come on, baby. Come on. A little bit more. Yes, yes. Ah, we cut these guys off. Very good, very good. So anyone who dies here dies for good. Uh, the Chariot Lords. Our vehicles must not only be strong, but also fast, capable of racing across the battlefield at a moment's notice. Brute computer machine's nice. Get some more of this, I guess, as well, because you can. So that wasn't over yet, but we must have killed off... Yeah, we lost about 80,000. We killed off a quarter million. Not bad. And if we get up there, there, we win immediately. Or just take this pal, too. And Drakpa... Thank you. Thank you very much, Imperium. Emperor of Mankind, I think not. 
and this will be our last major conquest of this episode or this video really because i i did say i want to put this into two videos but i think it just would make it one is that kimchaka 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 cool Tradition, traditions of the empire the shared swords um terrors of precious oh we can also go to war with them already yeah we can that's good that's gonna take us some time to get up there though oh it's definitely gonna take a lot of time to get up there uh -huh. oh this, this group might not be super easy to take out But that's that's pretty strong. And Terra's the Pushes. The ancient writings of the old Terra tell of an empire that spanned much of the world's center on the very ground we now walk. We must live up to this legacy and field an army unbeatable by anyone on this or any other planet. Alright, cavalry actually is not that great. So, but we can make them better. Bigger. Better. Stronger. More handsome. We can even go all the way up to 40s. Technology does not concern me anymore. They have divisions all over the place, too. Come on. Stop lagging so hard. Uh, I really wish it was hot keys. Oh, I can't even do that one. That sucks. 38's good enough for now. Just just to put these guys here. Cool. I don't care if it's ahead of time. I really don't. All right, let's see what we can do. Let it rip, boys and girls. Ush will fall. Oh, they have this guy, too. It's fine. Division for division. Looks like overall we're winning, but we'll see about that. Does a push us. They have... Quite a few divisions, but not bad. And after this, we will do Warriors of the Lion. Our warriors will be like lions, stronger, faster, and fiercer than anything else in this wasteland. Very nice. Mm, autocratic, yes. Sure, Sorush Abdul, yes, please. Not bad so far. We're doing really well, but it's going to take a while to get up to where. Oh, wow. Magog? Magog. Because we have horses first throughout all these armies. We have eight, ten divisions in total horses, which is not bad. Didn't become an organizer, which sucks, but whatever. It's just going to take some time to capitulate him, so. And then again, we've already ki killed off a quarter million of his soldiers. That's really nice. But you know what? Since we're here, might as well read some focuses. I guess we'll get this one done first. Warriors of the Lion. Cool. And then, like heroes of old, we shall live up to the legacy of the ancient Terran heroes of old. Our champion shall be able to be any warrior on this planet, the Wings Phoenixes. Or Sphinxes. We shall give life to the Sphinxes of old and let them roar to the skies against our enemies. Lightning machines. Even if they dare to fly our machines, we will strike them down with a fear of lightning. Flying palaquins. The sky will be just another front, and our soldiers will travel among the clouds as they would hills. Birds of prey. We shall destroy the troops and encampments from above. Rolling thunder. We shall lower their hives and reduce them to just another field of desert. Eyes of the hawk. We shall see all and none will be able to hide from our hawks. Very good. Ah, Ford Observer is nice. Keep going down with advanced fire bases. And then conquer the skies. We'll reach up like the, our ancestors before us and claim the very skies above us. Great. She can give us nice smooches. And that's the only reason why we chose her. Because of her lips. If we smooch her lips. Anyways. Um... You guys come down here. Come on in, kill them off. The damage has been done. Almost half a million dead. A bit, basically half a million dead already. So after all those, I guess we have just a few like trinket ones left over here. But let's do like heroes of old to get even more attack and defense for our infantry. Oh, so good. Infrastructure in Cyprica. I want an island in the ancient Mediterranean. Uh, Cyprica now encompasses most of the eastern Dust Bowl and our western border, like northern Anatole. Cyprica is a barren desert with little infrastructural development. As a core part of Anatole, Cyprica must be brought up to the speed. And industry. Cyprica has never been known for its industrial might. It buys and sells as a trade center rather than produces. Yet some uh, uh, parts of it still has potential as a major industrial center in Anatole. Infrastructure in the hills. Central Anatole is a hilly land in the core of the entire region. It is the most populous area and home to the majority of the Anatole tribes. Although more developed than north or south compared to the rest of the empire, it is a laughing stock. There is, it is the conquest priority to see this region as of Anatole developed to an equal footing as the rest of the empire. Industry in the hills. As core of the Anatole, the central regions must have their industrial sector developed and tribes devoted to industrial production. It shall be the industrial heart of all of Anatole and stand as an example for future generations to come. Just in time. Cool. Uh, let's read the last few ones and we'll call it a campaign, I suppose. And we don't have to kill off that last group, but it's fine with us. 
Fortifications in the east. Our eastern border is the gateway of our empire and the shield that guards all of Pesha from the past savages of the north. Yet that shield is crafted splintered. Should any truly powerful foe decide to strike us at all, we will be severely unprepared. But should we restore our old defenses, any fool foolish enough to do so will shatter upon us like the glass to a stone. And then fortifications in the south. Southern Pesha is the soul of Achaemenid Empire, yet it is left open and bare. Its defenses whittled down over centuries of negligence. Thus we shall rebuild them and show that the land of the Karnians cannot be so easily defiled. But I think that'll be it for us here, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, let me know what your thoughts on this mod are, because I always like reading your comments. Um, yeah, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow in another video. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!